Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and welcome to this week's episode of The Knife Guy. What are we talking about today? Um, I want to talk about something that I have found over time. Um, and just to kind of set the stage for what I'm about to talk about. This channel, if you're new, this channel is three and a half years old. Um, it has 75,000 subscribers. Uh, it has about 17 million total views. And last year alone got 85,000 comments. Wow, good for me. Uh, I am actually very proud of that. And thank you guys for you know, getting me here. Really cool. Uh, I'm very happy with the unbelievable growth of this channel in such a short amount of time. But that's not really my point. My point is, is that I have a lot of, you know, feedback, a lot of data that I get to look at, right? I can always tell when certain things are being received well and when certain things are being received not so well. Fortunately for me, most of the content on this channel, the, you know, it's like I, I've said over and over again, the, uh, the like to dislike ratio, which is still something I can see, even though they have taken the dislike button well, not the button, but the counter, right? They've taken that away. I can still see that ratio. 97.1% on this channel, which makes me feel really good, right? That's great. One of the elements that I found that you guys like, surprisingly, <laughs> that most of, the, most of you guys, right? Not everybody. The people who don't like it, they definitely tell me. But most of you guys have told me, we like it when you playfully mock the viewing audience. <laughs> and what I'm talking about is... Um, in the middle of a review, so how much does the Demco AD 20.5, the MG or machine ground variant of the AD 20.5 in full titanium cost? Well, on the secondary market, you're going to pay a lot more, but generally direct from Demco or the retailers that sell these, you're going to pay about $625. And then inevitably, somebody in the comments section who's not familiar at all just blurts out, for that much money, you could buy a gun, right? That's what I do, because it's funny. <laughs> We're expecting it. I do that kind of stuff because I know that that's going to happen. There are certain buzzwords, trigger words, phrases, and things that light people up who just, it, it's an impulse, right? I think some people, you know, have this funny impulse that it's like, oh my gosh, I need to educate these poor fools, right? And they jump, but they don't realize that it's all, like, there are certain responses that are almost memes at this point right and they are generally uh they generally come from people who are either incredibly unfamiliar with the knife world or at least this corner i don't want to say that my channel represents the you know collective thinking of the knife world no it's just one small corner right maybe they're just unfamiliar with my channel but usually people who say the gun thing it's just like it's just somebody from the gun community who just happened to fall into a knife video and not realize that expensive knives exist right so they don't know that it's an eye roll comment that it's generally laughed off and literally 100 percent of us go right back to doing exactly what we were doing being completely and totally unaffected by the comment right that's funny that's part of the reason why i'm it's just i know that certain things are going to be said i also it's my my um something that i like to do the most is and I want to make make this clear because a lot of I, the people who don't like it, they say things like, you you know, if you really want to grow on YouTube, you're going to have to stop that. Um, you know, you're just, you're not ever going to grow. Um, no, that's wrong. <laughs> the channel's done very well. In fact, it, it's like I always say, uh, you might not like it, right? I mean, but it's not the responsibility of any creator to cater to everybody who's watching. No. Not at all. You can't make everybody happy. It's not possible. What you should do is be respectful in a general sense, right? But let your true personality out so that you attract people who are like you, right? You should never, as a creator, go, what do people want to hear? What, what type of content do they want to be served? That's the type of content I want to create. Let me bow. Let me bend the knee. Oh, yes, here is your content delivered on a silver platter. Good sir. No! You make what you want to make, and the people who like it, they watch it. The people who don't like it, well, then, you know, they can go away. <laughs> but you should absolutely be generally respectful. I would never mock somebody for some, some element about themselves that they can't help, right? But if you're somebody who's just like, you know, lumbering through a community, 
no matter how much weather, you know, everybody was new once. That's the foundation for this. Everybody was new at one point. People have been around for a long time and they've decided which corner of the knife world they want to be in and what thought process they, you know, want to adopt. Oftentimes we'll look down on people who are either new and or, is that right? Let me, let me go back. They'll look down on people who are new because, you know, like elitists love to jump in and go, ah, yes, squire. Yes, you need to be trained in the art of the, the fine arts of wisdom. Let me lighten you, enlighten you. Let me lead you down a path of wisdom, golden light, yes, my eminence. <laughs> like, they like to do that. And it's like, just let people do what they're going to do. Like, you were new once and you went down your own way. But usually the common theme is with people like this, they uh, they take everything way too seriously. Everything is so serious. I always uh, laugh about that guy who was mad. Like, one of the best examples. There was a guy on Instagram who was mad that... Sometimes expensive knives have brightly colored scales. <laughs> I thought it was a joke at first. He was mad that Hinder knives and Demco knives had, the example he used was a blue scale. He was very upset about that. Do I have a knife with a blue? Yeah. And he was like, it's just so stupid. It should be serious, like black and gray and maybe dark red, mm. but only maybe. Blue is not a serious color and should therefore not be implemented on such a serious tactical object. I was like, what? <laughs> that cracked me up. Um, I, usually it is a joke. Like that's, you know, if you're new, usually that is a joke. It's just some, it's just somebody trolling and trying to have a good time. Um, but that guy was dead serious and I could not believe it. But people like that exist, right? They just, they're, they, they're so firm in their thought process that they have elected themselves the superior intelligence of whatever the parameters of the situation are, and that anyone who thinks differently is beneath them and has not considered all the point, right? Um, some people, you know, who have been around for a long time, and it's not necessarily something that's silly. It's just because of the time that they have been around, and this is the same with any community, like anybody, right? Sometimes it, people are just like, because I'm older, I'm smarter, right? Uh, so it's just people have different reasons for thinking they're better than other people. And, um, you know, they, they'll make comments like, well, listen here, okay? Uh, I've, been, I've been doing this. I've heard this coming a lot. And if you can't see me right now, but I've got my, I'm, I'm in sweatpants. I've got them hiked up way up high. I got my, hand, I got my, uh, my sweatpants hiked up to basically my, uh, um, Right, right below my chest, right in the center of my rib cage, and I got my, I got my, I got I'm pushed out. I got my arms out at my sides like uh, chicken wings, because <laughs> that's how I imagine people like that stand before they say this. Listen here, Sonny, I've been collecting knives for thirty years. It's always thirty, exactly. I've been around for th I've been in the knife community for thirty years. All right, okay. So before you try to tell me it's just that's what i hear afterwards it's like oh dude like right there well all you're telling me is you are taking this so seriously and anything that you say afterwards is going to be laughable now i'm not saying that people who've been around for a long time can't give good advice can't but basically it's the leading with the ego thing that makes it just that's just what makes me laugh and it makes me instantly develop a character around those types of people um, those are bills, right? Those, we've talked about that before. Um, and that's a, that's a classification of person alongside many other character traits, right? Um, and, uh, you know, there, I use a variety of different voices and different, you know, mannerisms and things to describe these people. And it's mainly a lot of times in reviews, I am taunting a little bit, but it's also damage mitigation. I found that a lot of people, and I can see this, if you didn't know this, <laughs> Some people are going to go, well, it's going to make your face, you, you might, it might make, might make you flush. When you type up a comment and then you decide to delete it immediately afterwards, I can still see it. <laughs> so I, I get to see everybody's back pedal. I get to see that a lot. And um, I know, you know, sometimes in reviews, I will say something and I'll, I'll make that comment like, you know, somebody was just typing and then decided to retract it. 
Some of those people legitimately do go ahead and send their comment through and then retract it because they get to a later part in the episode where I have predicted or said exactly what I assume they'll be leaving. So it's always funny to see that, right? And then I see their edit. And their edit is always based on the assumption that I didn't see the original comment, which makes it infinitely funnier, right? Um, so it's a, sometimes that happens, but a lot of times it's damage mitigation. I see the comment come through and then it's deleted. It's gone. Um, and, uh, that way, you know, cause what I want, the ultimate goal, the, the whole reason that I do it is because when I was, when I was venturing into this world, the knife world in the beginning, I was subject to arguably the most elite of the elite, the most elite <laughs> doves and golden doves and crap everywhere. I always have it, you know, like in my mind, these people are like, um, I don't know why I get a Harry Potter, like, Death Eater vibe from them. <laughs> it's the days that I spend on Blade forums. Oh, my gosh. Some of the egos there. I'm not saying I don't have my own ego. I definitely do. You can't do this and not develop an ego. But you got to keep it in check with humor, right? But I get a Harry Potter Death Eater vibe from a lot of these people. And it's... Uh, the scene specifically that I am referring to is when they're in, the, we're listening to the audiobooks again. I've read the book. I mean, physically read the books, right? For you freaking Harry Potter elitists out there. How dare you listen to the audiobooks, sir? Uh, no, I read the books and then read them again, then read them again. And now I'm lazy and I just want to listen to the audiobooks, right? So we're, my wife and I are listening to um, the fifth book, Order of the Phoenix. People fact check me. They're like, is he real? Huh? Is he really a Harry Potter fan? <laughs> the part when the, uh, they're in the um, Department of Mysteries and they got each other, you know, they're in a standoff with the wands, right? The Death Eaters and Harry. And they keep throwing the mudblood term. If you're not into Harry Potter, uh, mudblood is a term they use to describe a wizard who's not of pure blood, a wizard who has mingled with the non magical community, right? The muggle community. And they, they, they consider this bad, right? For what reason? It's They just do, right? It doesn't make them any less capable, right? But they consider it to be a thing that makes you less intelligent, inferior, not as powerful. You don't have the same potential. It's not true at all, right? So one of the elements of the book. And the irony is, is that their leader, Voldemort, right? His backstory is uh, one, he, he comes from mudblood or their own, by their own term, mudblood origins, right? Meaning his blood is also not pure, but it's something that they're, they're just blind to, right? This is sort of a blind and, you know, you can relate this to a lot of different things, but this is why it's funny because in that scene where they're on the standoff, right? Harry says in the book, like, did you know that your leader is also a mudblood? <laughs> it just makes me laugh. That situation where he points it out, like, you guys are so dumb. Your own, the guy who's commanding you is the very thing that you, the reason you're following him is that it undoes all of this and they just don't know how to deal with it. So they just yell at him and they shoot a bunch of spells at it, right? And it's funny how I relate that to what I'm talking about is that most elite, number one, the people who are like, oh, oh, filthy casual. <laughs> like those people, I imagine them with like leather gloves and like trench coats and they... They've got like, they're in like a small corner of the room and there's this like a big thick wooden table and they've got candles and they have like tomes and things and they've got like, you know, <laughs> like, a, like some of, some kind of like Ivy League frat and, it, and uh, nobody cares that they're there <laughs> because there's such a tiny little section where they take themselves so seriously that they're not aware of what, what a tiny part of the community they represent. Unfortunately, they more so often affect new people. Um, it, it's uh, it, the reason how I'm relating this, right? Not just the the look in my in my mind. Not only do I you know envision Death Eaters, but it's funny because you know speaking of not pure blood, it's as if these people believe that they were never new once, right? In Harry Potter, they describe you know, they talk about these pure bloodlines and how it's almost impossible for them to exist, but people who consider themselves a pure blood, they just ignore that, <laughs> right? Just as some knife elitists pretend that they were not new ones. Like they just popped into existence and were like, bam, who's ready to learn about knives the right way? 
right? Uh, that was my experience on blade forms and it cracks me up. So what I like to do, since these people so often negatively impact new people, these a lot of times these people are very heavy on the gatekeeping element, right? There's a lot to learn, but you can never learn enough to be me, right? It's like many past Knife Guy episodes we've talked about. It's really not about helping for those people. It's really just about letting new people know, hey, there's a uh, lower tier and there's an upper tier, okay? We're up on here. We're up on the upper tier, all right? Now, you can climb up some of the steps, but you can't come all the way up, all right? So just know that. Name's Barry. We'll see you around. <laughs> like, that cracks me up. My, uh, my goal oftentimes is to shut as many of those people down as possible and then make sure that those gates, at least in my small corner of the knife community, which is exactly that, a small corner, I want to make sure that it is friendly, that people know it's welcoming. Hey, the vast majority of us don't really take ourselves that seriously. Yes, there's a lot to learn. Yes, it can be really complicated. Yes, there's going to be a lot of opinions flying all over the place. But for the love of God... Let me help you identify some of these dork fish. <laughs> like, it's just, it's absolutely ridiculous. So, I love to mock people. Not only because I can predict, like, those, oftentimes, those types of people are the most predictable. Um, it's not just that, but it's also because it's just become a part of the content, right? There are just certain elements that are so easy to mock. And I'm not telling people they shouldn't enjoy this hobby the way that they want to. If you view knives as hyper-tactical objects that are, you know, these they're, they're offensive catalysts that uh, only the most seasoned, the most battle-hardened warriors can fully comprehend, and you're just doing that on your own, and you're not really, like, raining that down on anybody else, then fine. You're not hurt. It's fine. Enjoy it however you want. In fact, that message, I want to make that, it's not like I make the rules either. It's not like you're going to go, Middle Complex said. No, I don't make the rules. But if that's how you enjoy it, then you should. What, what I have a problem with is when people try to, <laughs> to negatively impact or, you know, sort of force their ideology with all of this on other people, especially new people. Um, for the benefit of their own ego. Uh, I, that's, that's my favorite type of thing to stamp out, right? <laughs> that's my favorite type of candle to smother. Um, because it's hilarious. You know, somebody, anybody who takes, you know, certain things so that seriously, right? Um, they, their emotion gets the best of them. And it's, it's you know, it's, it's just it's an open target. Um, now... A lot of you guys might be saying, if you're still here at this point in the upload, right? This is the part where a lot of comments are going to get deleted, and I get, I still get to read them. <laughs> um, a lot of you guys might be pointing out, you are the biggest hypocrite. You have such a big ego, and you make so much content that is exactly that. It's this very elitist perspective, or at least our perspective of your perspective is that you are this this exact uh, ironically this you know elitist that is imposing his thoughts on other people for the benefit of his own ego right i, I mean sure like I, just like any other human being i think i'm probably susceptible to that and i definitely you do dev you absolutely develop your own ego uh, whatever your ego is like to anybody on the planet who has any type of ego they build a youtube channel and it gets anywhere from you know, a teeny tiny bit of success to a massive amount of success, your ego is going to grow. I try to keep, I try to keep the reins on it with humor, right? And I think the best way to do that is to learn how to make fun of yourself. So believe it or not, all of my different voices and characters, um, the reason that some of them seem to be so direct, so right in the crosshairs, so right in the middle of the target is because they all represent a different time period in my journey through the knife world leading up to right now. Oh, how humble of him. Oh, he's pointing out his mistakes. He's pointing out his flaws in an attempt to uh, gain some form of temporary compassion from the viewing audience. <laughs> um, no, seriously, that's 100%. I've been there. I remember, like, adopting different thought processes that I thought made sense or that, you know, from... from opinions in the knife community that I idolized, mainly some 
blade forms like it's so funny i used to think certain like blade forms users that have been around for a long time every time they posted i was like oh oh gosh um, it's an honor just to be in his well not his real presence but his online presence <laughs> just to read i remember being new and a lot of people were like wow that why um, it just seemed like everything that they, these people would post to be so, it just seemed like it made sense. Then I find out that it's just, they're just, a lot of it's just opinions. Now, I'm not saying that there is not wisdom to be gained from people who have been around for a long time or have studied a lot or at view, you know, take some elements more or less seriously. No, definitely. But the moment that the ego is the driving force is the moment that I shut it down. Even if what those people are saying has truth to it. Even if there's something to be learned, I would rather shatter the uh, shatter the ego first because that's that, that's something that you have to do. I mean, I, uh, I'm, I'm that's what I try to do with myself is when when things start to get too serious, when I start to take myself too seriously, um, I kind of <laughs> remember these, you know, and it's easy. It's always in my face. So many examples all the time of how I don't want to act and how I don't want the knife community presented to new people, right? It, it, it's, that's what I use. I'm like, oh, yep, I've definitely thought that. Um, and so <laughs> I mock it. It's easy. It takes one to know one. Absolutely. A lot of times, and that's, that's probably true with a lot of things. People who are mocking a certain, you know, trait. Again, it's not about things that can't be helped, that your character traits individual character traits that can't be helped by an individual. No, I'm talking about people who develop, once they enter the gates of a community, they start to develop ridiculous ideas of, you know, people with superior viewpoints or su superior thought process, it's almost like it's a club. No, those clubs don't exist. <laughs> you can... You can buy whatever you want for whatever reason you want. You can enjoy whatever you want. Now, you, you're definitely subject to mockery for different like a lot of people for example will mock people who buy knives in timascus right because oh you like colorful stuff ha! i only like serious stuff like black and silver maybe dark red <laughs> you know like it's gonna be there right it's okay as long as you don't take that part seriously right my thing is if i can tell somebody's like you know hey to each their own but you know that's kind of goofy okay it's fine yeah, I mean, like, certain colors give off a more menacing vibe, sure. But it's like, why? Like, why can't people just enjoy whatever colors they want? <laughs> like, it's totally okay to, like, la you know, me personally, I would never carry a knife with a yellow scale. That seems, I just, I just am not a fan of yellow knives. But I fully understand that there are people out there who are like, hey, I like yellow. So that's why I care. I'm like, oh, well, okay, that makes sense. So I try to try to do that so that people don't. So that new people don't get the wrong impression because I feel like from my, and all I can do is give you guys my window washer perspective. And when I say that, I mean a window washer is no different than the people who are walking around on the ground. He's also a human being, not superior because of his, where he's sitting, but because of where he's sitting, he can look down and see a lot more of what's happening as a YouTube creator. I'm no better than anybody. In fact, I'm really legitimately just a guy who's handled a lot of knives. That's that's how I have self-qualified to be a knife reviewer. I'm a guy who has handled a lot of knives. That's it. Not a professional in anything, right? But I get to read a lot of comments. I get to see a lot of stuff. So my perspective on the knife community is most people don't take it that seriously. Most of us are just enjoying it for our own reasons, not trying to shove any of this down anybody else's throat. We're just enjoying it. You got a few fudder dudders, few bills and fudders and ding dongs and goofballs. <laughs> you just really have to. Hey, have you met me? You know. Oh God, gotta chop it down real quick. Anyways, I think I've been saying the same thing over and over again. Um, I fully expect to see some of those people right down in the comment section. So if you want to see what I'm talking about, just look right down there. I'm sure it's. <laughs> I'm sure it's just. <laughs> spectacularly accurate. Um, but uh, anyways, I think that's going to be pretty much it today. I hope you guys understood what I was saying. Just like to have fun. Not specifically in it to put anybody down, right? But I like the idea of welcoming as many new people as possible. 
and making that experience as enjoyable as possible for that person so that they can go down the path that they want to go down and enjoy it for whatever reason they want. Ah, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.